It's been around in various forms since the 1600s. It's powered locomotives, riverboats, and even automobiles. The Stanley Steamer was green before green was cool. Then Henry Ford and his assembly line began churning out cheaper, gas-powered cars. Today, 90 miles north of San Francisco, California, steam naturally puffs up from the ground, and a power network operated by Calpine called the Geysers is using that steam on a scale never seen before. Did you know the temperature of the core of the Earth is believed to be about the same as the sun? Today, we're here to see how they are taking that heat and creating renewable energy to power our lives. Let's go learn more. The Geysers is made up of 15 power plants um, scattered around 46 square miles. We have approximately about 83 miles of steam line, 325 steam wells, and roughly 65 injection wells. And this kind of energy is called geothermal. Operations manager, Josh Wade. Geothermal, um, geo earth, you know, thermal heat. And so what we're doing is we're taking, you know, heat from the earth and converting that energy into electrical energy. Geothermal energy is both old and new. It's as old as the formation of the Earth, but only in the past century has it been harnessed on a much larger scale. We weren't the first, but we definitely are the largest. The first production plant went into service in 1960. Mark Wiggs is the STEAM field operations manager. The Geysers was up here before that. It was actually a resort, and they were utilizing that steam for heat and electricity in the resort. Teddy Roosevelt actually came to the Geysers, so that was around the turn of the century. So it's been up here for quite a while. In order to capture the energy of the steam, water is injected into the ground, but not just any water. We pump uh, treated wastewater from Sonoma County and Lake County into the ground. And when it gets into the ground, um, it becomes very hot. It actually boils. Uh, we, we put it into the ground through, uh, through injectors. They're basically wells we've dug into the ground up to 10,000 feet into the ground. Uh, that water goes in, it touches that hot rock that's naturally occurring underneath the earth. Once it touches that hot rock, it boils and it turns into steam. So here we are in the main control station. What goes on at each of these stations right now? Um, this is the generation desk. Uh, Jerry's monitoring the power plants. Uh, presently we're generating about 690 megawatts, so he's uh, keeping an eye on the plants and the generation leaving the geysers. Over here on your right, uh, this is Harry Beasley. He's taking care of the steam field itself, uh, monitoring all the production wells and injection wells and working with our maintenance departments as needed to help uh, keep everything running at 100%. Cameras, gauges, monitors, radio traffic all have to be closely watched. Geothermal energy may be green, but it's also hot and pressurized. If you've ever seen a radiator overheat and the steam sprays out of it, well, Underground, the steam is under pressure, and as, as we bring it to the surface, it, it has a very strong velocity. So it looks like that's smoke coming up from the ground over there. What is that? Uh, that's not smoke. That's what's called a fumarole. A uh, fumarole is basically where groundwater has gotten in and come in contact with the hot rock and turned into steam, and then found a fissure or a, a crack in the ground that allows it to come up to the surface. I've also noticed it smells kind of like rotten eggs here. Yeah, that's not rotten eggs. What you're smelling is a hydrogen sulfide or H2S. It's naturally occurring. It's something that's coming up out of the ground with the steam. As the largest geothermal power installation in the world, it produces a lot of power. On average, we're producing about 725 megawatts which will run a city the size of San Francisco. California's geography allows it to tap into geothermal energy because California is located on the seismically and volcanically active ring of fire that circles the Pacific Ocean. That's where underground heat is closer to the surface. But better drilling technology could open other parts of the world to this clean fuel. And that can be exciting. I'm a petroleum engineering student at Colorado School of Mines. Brett Tucker is an intern at the Geysers. What got me into interested in geothermal energy was the fact that it is a renewable energy source, whereas I'm a petroleum engineering student, uh, not a renewable resource. However, the geothermal is, so I want to be part of something of the future that's going to have lasting impact in the future. There, there really is no harmful side effect, and it is renewable because as long as we have water, as long as we have the heat in the earth, we can continue to make electrical energy. Why aren't there more geothermal plants right now? It's all hot underneath our feet no matter where you stand. Like I said though, it just, it's harder to get to in certain places because of the distance. We've made great strides and advancements in, in, in 
in the technology and, and being able to drill a little bit deeper and get to different reservoirs that we, we couldn't get to before. So, so yeah, I, see, I think there's a bright future for geothermal. And geothermal will continue to make a difference. We have one earth. We need to be good stewards of that earth. Um, so the onus is on us to make wise decisions now.